Welcome to What Gear Reviews, Sony fans. And you should probably know, sometimes people call me a Sony fanboy. And I have no idea why they'd say that. So what I want to do in this video for you guys is highlight the main upgrades, also talk about some of the stuff that they've taken away and some of the stuff that they've decided to keep that's tried and trusted and I think you'll be happy to hear about. So are you ready? Let's begin. From what I can see there are five significant hardware improvements. First of all, Sony have finally improved the selfie camera. We now have a 12 megapixel selfie shooter 20 millimeter equivalent f2.0 and it shoots 4k 120 frames per second now at the time of this video a lot of the reviews you've seen and samples from that front facing selfie camera is with pre-release software so it's probably not at its full potential just yet i will be testing it out in the future and i'll let you know what i think of the improved camera performance because in my opinion when it came to the previous Xperia 1s the selfie shooter was an area of weakness so it's good to see that they've strengthened that. The second big upgrade is a massive one so on the Xperia 1 Mark 3 we had a 75 millimeter to 105 millimeter equivalent zoom lens which shifted the glass inside the device from one position to the other however everything in between was digitally zoomed with the new Mark IV, we have a newly designed zoom camera module. So now we have new hardware. The glass can slide to any fixed position between the 85 millimeter and 125 millimeter equivalent focal length. And that is a really big deal when it comes to picture quality, clarity, and there's also optical image stabilization built into that camera module. And this is another world's first from Sony. Number three. So one of the big criticisms the Xperia 1 series has had in the past is, yes, you've got a beautiful 4K 10-bit display, but what's the point of having a beautiful display if you can't see it on a bright, sunny day? Well, the Mark IV is 50% brighter. The resolution and PPI remain the same. However, what's driving the pixels and the graphics and everything you see on the display is a newly improved and upgraded Qualcomm Snapdragon chipset and that's number four is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. So at the heart of almost every single Android flagship smartphone is a Snapdragon chipset and somehow Qualcomm every year managed to make a better one. And that's exactly what we got here, the best of the best. And here's some top level facts about the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 that you should know about. We got 50% faster graphics rendering with it being 25% more power efficient. The ISP, the image signal processing, can capture 4,000 times more data than the flagships from the year before. We're gonna see improved AI, as well as improved connectivity with Wi-Fi 6 and 6E, improved 5G connectivity, and we're also gonna see Bluetooth LE, which is Bluetooth Low Energy, supported on this device. And that really is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to this chipset. If you guys wanna learn more, I did make a bunch of videos about it, so I'll link those at the end. Anyway, the next big upgrade is related to power. So on the Xperia 1 Mark III, we had a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, which is pretty decent, but now we have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery with a more efficient Qualcomm chipset inside. Together, we should have a better battery performance from the Xperia 1 Mark IV. Again, all of the reviews you would have seen right now are pre-release software. So fully expect Sony to have done more optimization when it comes to battery life performance by the time we actually see the phone. When it comes to charging, apparently it's gonna come with a 30 watt charger. And of course it's gonna support Qi wireless charging. That's pretty good, how about that? So those are the five big improvements we're gonna see. But here's some of the smaller upgrades that you need to know about. The edges of the device are flat and the front and back have Gorilla Glass Victus, which is the strongest Gorilla Glass we've ever seen. Also, all of the cameras now support 120 frames per second in 4K. And that includes the selfie camera. That is a pretty big improvement. All of the cameras also support eye autofocus and object tracking. When you're filming video in Video Pro, you can now smooth zoom between the lenses almost seamlessly. Again, this might be something that's fine-tuned with software. And even better than what you've seen now 
in review samples. And I will let you know how good that is when I finally get to test it out. Also, there's been improvements to the Photo Pro app, so you can actually select and dial in the Kelvin manually, which is something we couldn't do before. I've also heard we're gonna see better stabilization for video and also better night photography. That one is gonna be very interesting and I absolutely will be testing that out in the future. So make sure you're subscribed with your bell notification on for when that video eventually goes live. Also on the video topic, there's a new HDR feature which uses the 120 frames per second, but actually scales it down to 30 frames per second. And I'm assuming what that does is it actually takes four different exposures and it kind of fuses them all together so that even in really bright lighting conditions, you get a really nicely lit scene without overblown highlights and dark shadows and a mess in between. And here's another software upgrade that will be available to the Xperia 1 Mark IV, and that's the Vlog monitor. Previously, it only works here on the Xperia Pro i, but it will work on the 4. That means you can use your primary camera for selfie photos and videos, as well as vlogging, which is really what the vlogging monitor is for. Some other features that you can do in software now is you can actually live stream directly from the Video Pro app to YouTube, for example. Also within the Sony Game Enhancer, you can stream straight to YouTube, your gameplay, and you can even do picture in picture, so you can use your selfie camera on the phone to actually put yourself into the frame of the video that you're streaming. So that's pretty cool that you can do that all within the software. There is a new Music Studio app, which I think they're just calling Music Pro. And I'm not sure whether Sony have upgraded the actual hardware when it comes to microphones on board, or whether that's just handled better by software and with the new chipset. But essentially what you can do is use your device as a studio quality microphone for recording music or voiceover or anything like that. And I'm assuming there's noise cancellation AI, so you can block out background noises on the mic. It'd be interesting to see how good that is. I'll have to ask Sony whether they've upgraded that hardware or not. So it definitely sounds like a good feature to me. And you know what else sounds good when it comes to upgrades? We've got newly improved, more powerful speakers. If you want to turn the volume up to 11 when you're watching movies or gaming on that 21 by nine inch display, they will sound better than ever. And as well as that, we still have the 3.5 millimeter audio jack, which doubles up as a mic input. If you want to plug in an external mic, we do still have the hybrid quick release tray on board. They have scrapped the Google Assistant button, which I think probably nobody used that much anyway. So that's not such a big loss. And we still have the uninterrupted 21 by nine 4K HDR 10 bit OLED panel with a crazy pixel per inch density and I am certainly a fan of that. And do you know what one of the taglines for the new Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV is? Speed is everything. And let's just hope we don't have to wait three months before we can actually buy one of these. Let's hope Sony speed up the process and get those on shelves a little bit quicker this time. And on that topic, if you could hit the subscribe button real quick, I really appreciate that. And if you do, you will be one of the finest subscribers known to man. And make sure you've got your notifications on because I will be covering this phone in the future, hopefully with the complete and finished software. So we'll see the proper performance when it comes to the camera quality. I do have more Sony reviews in the pipeline. So make sure you keep your eyes open for those. Appreciate you guys for watching this one and I'll see you in the next one. Don't be late.